the computer. Admit. All right. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Okay, we got some last people rolling on in. Okay. Now, if any of you guys see that there's people waiting to go in, you know, I'm terrible with that. I've had people say, I waited all meeting and I couldn't get in. <laughs> Oh, no. That was me. <laughs> so if anyone could just say, hey, Carrie, you got no. people waiting and I'll go ahead and get this started. Okay. So let's talk about some of my favorite topics. Ready? Closing. Uh, and this is a, such a great quote, but it's true. Clothes, people take it wrong. People think, uh, when you think of clothes, you think of that really pushy, used car salesman, timeshare, throw something down your throat. That's not what closing should be. I'm not going to say that's not sadly what it sometimes is, but it's not what it should be. But the whole point of closing is to help people understand their needs and their wants clearly to take away the tension. Because, you know, when people get to a buying decision or a selling decision, they get nervous. And then their mind gets all cluttered with all sorts of things. We're supposed to try to help them push away all of that indecisiveness that's just coming because they're nervous and help make the choice that's clear for them. Not for us, right? We're not trying to shove it down their throat, but we've been working with these people. We're trying to help them. So we have to get them past when they're scared and indecisive. And they're scared and indecisive really based upon, you know, the fact that they're making a decision. Okay, so moving on. Here we go. Trial closes versus actual tie downs. There's two different things, okay? Sometimes you've got to trial close to see where you're at. But the worst thing to do is to close too early, right? If you close someone too early, you just met somebody, you've been with them for about 20 minutes, you say, hey, are you one in the first house to see? You say, let's go ahead and put in an offer, right? They're probably gonna be like, who are you? I had, we're supposed to see five homes. And I had actually a true story. First time coming down, I had been talking to this agent. She did a fabulous job with her follow-up. I mean, literally kept me engaged for about a year and a half before I came down to do the whole buying tour. And I was planning on buying that, that weekend when we were here. It was about five days. And the first day, every home we went into, and we started in Dr. Phillips. And I know I like new. Is Dr. Phillips new? No. No. No, so it's probably not a good start, right? But anyway, she wanted me to start me and Dr. Phillips. What do I know? Okay, fabulous. Every home, this is the home for you. Let's go ahead and buy it today. No. Next home, I know this is the right one. Let's put it in offer. By the end, I said, we're not going to work together anymore. She said, unfortunately, she had caught on to that. I wish we could, but I am really busy for the next week. I had something happen. Can my husband take over? It was either that or I was going to kill her. So her husband was fabulous. And by the way, didn't take us any more homes. We went to all new homes because that's what I wanted. But the point was she tried to close too soon. So even though she spent a year and a half building a fabulous rapport with me, she blew it by closing too early. She did not earn the right to close, right? Does that make sense? You've got to earn the right to close, meaning you have to really understand what their needs and wants are. So that when you're asking them to make that decision, you know, it's at the right time. So timing is crucial. So to find out, is it the time, you need to do some temperature gauges. You need to do some of those trial closes. And tie downs, that's when you're trying to get that agreement all along the way. So that way, when you are ready to close them, you've had that opportunity. The other really great point about the, the tie downs is I, I, I had an agent tell me, which was really cute how he said it. It was couldn't agree, disagree more with what he said, but he said, well, he liked to say, is there anything that would keep you from buying with me today? And I just said, why would you say that? And he says, because I want to get all the objections out. I said, well, I could appreciate wanting to get the objections out. Can I appreciate you then wondering what's wrong with you? Have you committed a felony? Or perhaps there's something I really need to know, right? <laughs> is there something that's going to keep you from buying with me today? Yeah, you now. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna find out. Let me go look at my. I mean, what is that, right? Never say that. Yeah, Never. That's a bunch of I just. Well, they should be shocked because that's a terrible thing to say to somebody. Definitely don't say it in new homes. 
or regular mm -hmm. film. Uh, so, but the, the idea of wanting to get those objections out makes sense, right? And that's the other thing of, this really does work for you, doesn't it? Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Now we can handle that objection, right? So if you're not checking in, seeing how we're doing, am I getting what you're really looking for? And does it really work for you? Then I don't have an opportunity by the end when I do close, they're gonna throw every objection on the book because I never took the time to test as I was going, right? Make sense? Okay, this is a trial close. I love this one. You guys have all, I just trial closed you. Does that make sense? <laughs> I can't even stop myself. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> is this what you had in mind, right? Is this, <clears throat> this one's a great one for a seller. Is this the type of communication you were looking for? You talk about a pulse report. You share something about a list trial. I know you had mentioned to me, Rafe, how important communication was to you. Is this the type of communication you were looking for? Well, actually, no, I wanted to really have more one-on-one -on -one time with you face-to-face. -face. Oh, Jesus, I'm in trouble, right? Like, you just need to know where you're at. They, they may, you might think, I'm answering what they wanted. They wanted communication. So look at all these things I'm showing you. It is communication, but it's really more accountability, isn't it? Right? So understand that there may be an answer to that question that you're not prepared to. Now, just because you said, no, not really, doesn't mean I'm doing a bad job. It just makes me have to, you know, tweak whatever I'm doing to understand what is it then that he's looking for in communication. Is this the level of service and exposure you were expecting? That is a great one, especially after you're trying to handle an objection, right? When their objection was, maybe they weren't sure about you as an agent, they weren't sure you can handle the price point. Good morning, come on in, Emily. So I really like this one. So is that the level of exposure? Anybody else? Throw me another try close. Anybody? Would this work? Is this the type of kitchen you shared? You wanted a, a gourmet kitchen. You know, gourmet kitchen could be a lot of things to a lot of people, right? Is this what you had in mind when you said gourmet kitchen? Right. And I might say, well, no, gourmet kitchen meant two, two ovens. And you're like, hmm. Is this, uh, is this what you had in mind? Right, and Elster. So you were looking for a late view. Right. Is this the kind of view you were hoping to wake up to? Right? Now, if they say no to that, you're really bad because that means you've <laughs> missed the mark completely. Okay. But yes, absolutely. So great trial closer. <laughs> tie down. These are so easy. If it's an NT, it's a tie down. Doesn't it? Wasn't it? This is exactly what you shared you were looking for, isn't it? You told me you wanted that huge three-car garage. This really is a huge three-car garage, isn't it? Wasn't it? Wouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Couldn't it? Don't you agree? The don't you agree is the only one that really kills the NT. I mean, it is in the don't. But anyway, so if you... <laughs> question? No? Okay. If you just remember to do the NTs, shouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Couldn't it? Won't they? This is also great for a momentum close, right? If you're in a momentum closer in each different area, let's say you're touring a home. Wow, Rafe, you told me you wanted large secondary bedrooms. These are huge, aren't they? Is this exactly what you were looking for, isn't it? Yeah, great. We go in the next room. Oh my gosh, gourmet kitchen, double ovens, and it's got the, you know, sub-zero and it's got, this really does seem like the kind of gourmet kitchen I wish I could have. Does it work for you as well? Right? Trial close. I'm now about to work back into another tie down. The next one, like don't always do the in it, shouldn't it, wouldn't it? Because it will seem a little weird, right? <laughs> but you want to build up. So at the end, the yes is already there. So that is uh, a, a momentum close we're going to go to. Reduce to the ridiculous. Let's all pull out our calculator. We're all going to do this one. This one is so simple. Right? Yes. So this is an easy one, but I want us to play with, play a little, have a little fun with this. So, Alistair, you said you really loved the yellow home. I did. But I it did. was, you know, it, it is about 30000 more than the blue it one. Is. And the blue one does not have the same cover it that doesn't. you wanted. It doesn't. And it doesn't have that beautiful cover that I can see. She told me she wanted to have that glass of wine. You know it. So is it really the 30000 that's making you a little nervous? You know that too, don't you? Okay. So let's look at this for a it. second. So let's take $30,000. Now you're going to finance this, right? Yeah. Right, for 30 years. So let's take the $30,000 divided by 30. Okay. I mean, divided by a year. Hold on. Yeah, $30,000. 
divided by 30 years. That's a thousand a year. Let's divide that by 12 months. That's eighty-three dollars a month. And let's say there's you know 30 roughly days in a year, a month. So, so for two dollars and seventy-seven cents, are really? you really gonna take that away from Cindy, that outdoor balcony area, and really not let yourself have that? You know the answer to that. Answer? Let's go ahead and put the offer in right now, right? Reduce, it. and it is just that easy. Just that easy. Thank you, Dr. Proclaim. That was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's here. Oh, good boy. I'm here. I'm going to sit at the back. I have a client coming in. Oh, you do? Fabulous. <laughs> so. That can potentially make a difference, though, if, if they don't have, like, the lending ability to go. Well, listen, if somebody is approved up to, say, 500 and you've taken to a house of 530, shame on you. You know, you should have been talking to that lender and know that that's a hard approval. Now, some people get approved for 500, but they could go up to 600. It's a level of comfort. You ask so, your lender, hey, how much? Well, that's why you have a conversation before you go showing and you talk to the lender. If you guys aren't talking to your buyer's lenders, you're totally missing the mark there, right? I, I mean, absolutely. But here's another great thing. To be able to do a reduce to the ridiculous, you need to understand really their financial capability, right? You have to understand where their level of risk is, where they feel comfortable. So sometimes it's, I, I don't care how many times they bought and what their price point is. I like to have a conversation, even though I've talked to the lender. So Tammy, I've spoken to Maria and she shared with me at that $500 mark, you're looking at about $2,500 a month all in. That's comfortable for you? Yeah. Okay. Great. Now she also mentioned you could go to 550 easily and that would bring it about to 2,700. How does that feel? I would really like to stay closer to 2,500. So the 2,500 is your drop dead. You know, I mean, for the right house, Okay, great. Perfect. Listen, you need to know that. And that's why Maria's class next week, here's a plug, navigating all different kinds of mortgages. You should be able to pull and know before you go a average price point. Yes, it's going to depend on HOA. It's going to depend on taxes slightly, but we need to have a really good way to be able to figure that out and have that in our mind before that conversation. Because I could have said 2,700. She's like, oh, is that all it is? Yeah. Well, yeah, that would be okay too. So just out of curiosity, Tammy, what is the max you would feel comfortable with monthly? Because that's the most important thing. It's not how much you can afford, right? It's how much you feel comfortable with monthly. You know, I think for you, it's about 2,600. Okay, so 2,600 and you're still be able to go out to see the movies sometimes and go out to dinner. Yeah, and I'm looking at this home and I realize it's older, so it's going to have higher AC costs and uh, this has an older pool, so I'm going to need to be budgeting for upgrading pool equipment. And so in this home, I think 2600 So that's very smart of you. You're planning ahead your reserves. Most people don't do that. You must be an accountant in your previous life. <laughs> Is that my <laughs> I might have known that. <laughs> so let me ask you then, Tammy, if we were to find a home that fits all of your needs but happen to be new or newer, then you wouldn't be concerned quite so much about having those reserves. So in that instance, what would you feel comfortable going up to? You know what? Then maybe it would go to 2700 Have those conversations, guys. Because when you're out on the fly and things are going wrong and maybe things aren't looking the same way because they're changing their mind, how many times do you give you the top five must-haves? You go out there and they're like, yeah, no, I don't like that. And you're like, <laughs> right, it happens. Or husband and wife start to fight and you're like, okay, I got hers and not his. You know, even though they sent it in two different sheets, I see that he really didn't share what he really wanted. So you've got to be able to sometimes be on your, you know, on your toes, be able to switch and, and change directions. But you can't do that unless you have a really clear indication of not just their financial capability of purchasing, but their financial comfortability of purchasing. That's important. Uh, there are people, by the way, I have had people who say, well, money doesn't matter. Right? Have you guys, anybody had that one? Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't really mean it doesn't matter. It means they don't want to tell you, right? So I said, fabulous. So Emily, if it doesn't matter, you're paying cash then. 
Oh no, I'm going to get a mortgage. Oh, okay, great. So where would you be comfortable monthly with that mortgage? <laughs> right? Give me a break. It always matters. If someone tells you it doesn't, either they have, they're a billionaire and you didn't know about it. And by the way, you're probably looking at the wrong house. And they're more, they're more strict about it. <laughs> no, they are really clear. I'm just kidding. No, the reality is if they're telling you it doesn't matter, they're probably not comfortable with you. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Come Cindy. on in. All right. Any questions about the reduced to the ridiculous? Guys, this reduce to the ridiculous also works when you're with a seller and you need to do a price decrease, right? If they're talking about their buying power of their next home, are they financing their next home? So I know that you really wanted to get XYZ out of this home because you're going to use it to purchase the next one. You said you did find one or two that you really liked. And were you buying those cash or were you going to finance them? No, I'm going to finance them. Great, 30 years again, you do the same thing. And it will help you get those price decreases. The only time it won't is if they're trying to buy cash because they're downsizing and they're retiring, you know, then you're kind of stuck, right? All right, any questions about that? The reduce the ridiculous though is so easy. Don't get caught up, by the way. We have all had these people. And they try to say, well, well did you calculate in there my amortization, right? Don't get caught up, which is why you need to have that conversation with the lender beforehand to have a basic idea of how much their monthly looks like at the price point you're looking at and how much higher they can go and what that monthly looks like. Make sense? Because no, we're not going to calculate in with the amortization schedule. Okay, it takes away the reduced to ridiculous. All right, dilute it. In the grand scheme of things, do you really want to walk away from this home if it has dot, 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 dot? I kind of did that when I used the reduced to the ridiculous, right? So a lot of times these closes work together. Um, dilute it is really good for that husband and wife that are like this. You know, you guys have had that one, right? And you're like, I don't know if they were fighting on the way here or what happened. I have actually sat people down and said, let's sit down for a second. I just want us to kind of get on the same page again, reframe our minds, like where are we at here today? So you keep saying that you will not consider a house that doesn't have a three-car garage. And you keep saying you will not consider a house that doesn't have a pool or whatever it is. So I just want to make sure everybody feels great. If we have a pool for him, a purple pool for her, and a three-car garage, we're ready to move forward today. Oh, you know what I mean? You just sit them down and get them to agree. It doesn't matter what they're agreeing on. You just got to get an agreement. So the dilute could be really good for that. I know you're saying you really wanted that workbench. And I know this car garage is a little bit not as deep as you would have liked. But in the grand scheme of things, you have that extra bonus room. Any chance you could put your workbench up there? You have some extra space. And wouldn't it be nicer instead of sweating yourself to death out here in this heat to be working in a pool environment? Right? Okay, dilute it. Any questions on dilute it? Anyone want to try one? I'll take that as a no. Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> try it, try it. For this one? Dilute, uh huh. When it all boils down. Mm -hmm. What you really want to do is you want to walk away with an area that gives you the zen that you want while also letting your grandkids, when they come to visit, raise the roof. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. But you got to dilute it. So, how, so you have to answer how this space would do that. So when it all boils down, you wanted to make sure you had your Zen room. You wanted to make sure you had an area for the kids to run around. But realistically, if they were here, they were running around and even your Zen room was busy. Couldn't you use that backyard space as your little sauna? That little heaven space, you know, that you could hop in the jacuzzi, pour a bottle of wine and forget they're in the house. <laughs> right? You, you've got to still answer it. Remember. the yeah, you can still watch them if you just put a ring camera in the backyard without having to get up. Exactly. As a matter of fact, we could put one right there. Right. <laughs> exactly. All right. Everybody knows I love the feel felt found. This is the easiest go to to do. And remember, it is never, ever about you. The feel I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way when I moved down. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's always Sue and Tom with me because those are my cousins, but it could be anybody you want. It really doesn't matter. We've all been through a lot of these situations and sometimes we don't remember the customer's names and sometimes we do. Whatever comes out of your mouth is irre irrelevant. It just has to be someone other than you, right? 
I know exactly how you felt. Sue and Tom, I just talked to them the other day. They felt the same way. It's funny that you say that. But they were concerned about having that space for the grandkids when they came down, but having their own private Zen space. And they realized they were too close together and they were concerned that they wouldn't be able to still relax. And you know what they found? They found they didn't spend much time in the Zen room and the kids barely ever came down, but they spent all the time in that jacuzzi outside. Do you think you might find things that way too? Right? Feel, felt, found. Anyone want to try feel, felt, found? Backyard is just too small. Someone throw me a feel, felt, found. Anybody? I understand I how you feel. Mm -hmm. Matt and Jen felt the exact same way. But what they found was that the upkeep on a much bigger backyard was, was more than they really wanted to handle. Nice. Have you mowed a lawn in July? <laughs> Beautiful. Because I have, and it sucks. <laughs> Beautiful. But I, I might have gone a little farther with that. I love that. I know exactly how you feel. It's so funny. I was just naming. I always throw that in there because why did I bring a Matt and Jen? I was just talking to Matt and Jen the other day. And you know, they had the same thing. They were concerned that that backyard was too small and they were moving down from New York and they kept saying how they were going to spend all this time in the backyard. But when I saw them the other day, you know what they said? They said they found it's so darn hot out here. They're mm -hmm. so glad they didn't buy that home because they barely spend any time outside at all. And instead they converted that bonus room into an amazing theater room. And that's where they spend all their time. Mm -hmm. right or you could have gone with the cost but i'm just saying remember to make sure how you saw them i know exactly how you feel they felt the same way you know it's a little bit too textbook so i you know it's so funny you say that oh my gosh i was just meeting with sue and tom i was always meeting with sue and tom or i just got a card from sue and tom i just heard from them all the time and but it, the key is <laughs> sue and tom i've been through it all okay <laughs> Sometimes it's, you know, Maria and Henry. Gotcha comes out anyway, I say it. You know, I don't even know. But uh, but the key is, guys, just remember why you spent time with them. Like, well, how did you hear from them? Otherwise, it's sort of weird, right? And, and how you shared their story and this is what they were concerned with. But this is what they found. And then let them, yeah, I can see that. You know, if you say too much, remember, you close past the close. So don't go too far into it, right? Okay. Questions of feel, feel, found. That one needs to become your best friend. So this is the momentum close. Now, you can't say it. Oh, this is exactly what you were looking for. And then move on. Yeah, you told me you wanted this. Look, you have it. No, right? I'm assuming I know what they want. The point of the momentum close is the tie downs, right? And the trial closes. Oh my gosh, Rosanna, you wanted a craft room? Look at this space. This is exactly what I can imagine. Is this exactly what you were looking for? Yes. <laughs> She's not a craft. <laughs> She's like, no, I don't like crafts at all. You must be talking about Zoom and Tom. <laughs> right? And oh my gosh, this kitchen. You shared with me you love to cook. Imagine the things you could cook on this huge countertop. This really does work for you, doesn't it? Right. Good job, Rosanna. Right. But, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I do it automatically. We all do. Come on. We're all very expressive people. But the key is when she gets there, then by the end, you're like, I can't believe we found the perfect home. The question is alternate choice clothes. How much you want to put down? 5,000, 2,000, 20,000, 30, whatever. Right. But they have to agree the whole time. And if there's a no good, gives you a chance to handle those objections. Right. By the way, <laughs> don't try the momentum close if you're really at a 50 50. Right. Like, because then they'll be like, no, that's that just it doesn't work really well. So if you feel that there's some negative, you want to do a share with me. If I wave the magic wand, what that perfect kitchen would look like. Oh, I love that. That's ninja all day long. If I wave the magic wand, what would that perfect kitchen look like? You know, you've got to have them tell you these things. So that way, when you're in this space, you're not making it up. And they're like, I don't even bake. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's never good. Yeah, we're Uber eaters. You know, I've had that too. When I was in the kitchen and said, you know, so share with me, is this the kind of kitchen you'd imagine? She's like, well, I guess it'll stay clean because I never cook. Fabulous. Oh, look how great and shiny these countertops will always be. <laughs> Moving on, right? Like, there's nowhere to go from there. 
<laughs> okay. Any questions about the momentum close? The momentum close is never final. It leads you to probably an alternate choice close or something like that. Okay. So a lot of these closes are meant to be worked in conjunction. You could dilute something and then go momentum, couldn't you? Well, it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but you shared with me that. And you, you know what I mean? So you could build up from there. There's a lot of times you could use these things together. All right. Piece of paper. Everybody got one? Yep. Ben Franklin it. I have used the Ben Franklin so many times in my life. My kids know the Ben Franklin. True story. If those of you heard it before, I'm sorry I'm going to share it again. But uh, my son, my oldest, we were in the airport. We were at Johns Hopkins. He was already accepted at Johns Hopkins, which was his first choice. But suddenly he didn't want to sign because he's like, I don't know, maybe I want to go to Vandy. So we're in the airport. And he's having this moment of, but he was just nervous, right? He didn't want to sign away his life, even though Johns Hopkins was like his dream and he was in and he was so excited. He was like, no, suddenly he was wrong, right? That's what our buyers and sellers do, right? So he says to me, mom, can you Ben Franklin? <laughs> I said, yes, let's do it. So we did this. Okay, that's a Ben Franklin. And it's, however you want to call it, yellow house versus the brick. What'd you say? I was gonna say the zebra house. Or the zebra house. Whatever, whatever, however you're describing it. In his case, it was Johns Hopkins versus Vanderbilt. And then it's pro. You don't have to write this. I'm just putting it here for our things. We know that it's pro con. Okay. You don't have to actually write that part in. And you start writing away. But there's a very crucial part to the pro con. Anybody know what the most important thing about doing event Franklin is? Writing their words. their words. You need to use their words. Who wants to play with me? Cindy? Sure. So Cindy, I know you loved that yellow house. Tell me what was one of the favorite your favorite things about it. Um, the family room. What about the family room? Now I know because I was in the house with her, but I need her words. Um, it was open, <gasps> very well lit. Open, well lit family room now by the way if i know that one is cl a clear choice versus another i might write bigger on the pro smaller on the con right just so you know because the key about this is the the visual representation you will have at the end of it okay what else what was the thing that your husband loved again about the old house now i'm asking these questions like i wasn't there but i want her to tell me or i'd ask him obviously the backyard Spacious, he could barbecue, entertain, loves to entertain. Okay. And what about the kids' bedrooms? You wanted those, those, um, what was it about the kids? Um, enough space for them to. <laughs> oversized, yes, right? Oversized room. Rooms, and your daughter needs plenty of, uh, plenty of closet space. Right, whatever you've gone through, like pull it out of her, right? Now, what was the one thing that you were just wish you could change about the house? The um, master bathroom was not as big as I wanted. That's right, a little bit slightly small, right? What am I doing? Diluting slightly small her master bath. I'm going, to, I'm going to do another technique in a second too. Um, and, oh, and it did only have that two car garage, right? Oh, okay. So it's a two car garage. Now, what was it again about that third car? What did you want to use that for? Because you don't have three cars. What was it? Um, jet ski. That you want to put the jet ski. But you did have those really, really high ceilings in that car garage, right? So presumably we might be able to get one of those uh, lifts and make it so that you can pull your car in and out, but you put the jet ski on top, that would work, wouldn't it? So that's really not an objection after all. <laughs> right? So sometimes we're gonna hand <laughs> So uh, work with me, Ray. <laughs> so would it be a good idea if, if in that situation say that happened is real? They started out with the con, but then it really wasn't one to just leave it up there, but then draw a line through it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want it to be a visual representation. Okay. And you you loved, what was that about the brick house you loved? 
Um, we love that it was actually one story. Right. Which would be really weird that one would be one story. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Never mind. The master um, bedroom was down. The master was, yeah, downstairs. That's perfect. <laughs> Okay. She said that would be the thing to go to the dirt middle. <laughs> 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 but you did say your kids are so little. You were a little concerned about having to run up and down, weren't you? Right. And in that yellow house, you do have that wonderful den that could be converted into a bedroom if you chose it in later life, if you felt like you couldn't go up and down the stairs, couldn't you? So maybe not such a... <laughs> <laughs> like you can play that either way okay and but but you should you know it does have the three-car garage i know we like that and also by the way if i'm trying to make a clear representation i might use my words in, in a little bit on the pros of the one that i don't think it's going to be right mm -hmm. but be careful with that it's really important to use their words but the con, what was that one thing you really you know that brick house just doesn't have that backyard right backyard and the pink room for Back yard. Now look at how much I'm running. Too small <laughs> to entertain. Kids' rooms smaller. Oh, yeah. No walk in for your daughter. Right? For Susie. And now, when you feel like you've covered them all, and so you take your paper, which I can't do with this thing because it's huge. And you flip it around and you say, I guess you did make your decision after all. <laughs> Question is, do you want to come in and asking or above? Alternate choice, right? Ben Franklin, you don't have to say anything. It closes for you. You flip it around. I guess you did make your decision. The next step is, right? That's another one. So it doesn't matter where you go, but you got to go somewhere from there. But give it a moment when you flip it around. Wow. I guess you really did make the decision after all. Let them soak it in. Usually they will speak there. But if they don't, you can go. The next step is, which would you rather put down? You know, I know you wanted to close in 30 days, but blah, 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 whatever that case is. Questions? Yeah. So what point? When would you pull this this technique out? Oh, I've used this so many times. Between two, you like right there toward the end, and you can. Yes. So as I've shared when we did our buyer class, I always do a beautiful cloud team and buyer tour for the buyer and do the MLS spreadsheet for myself, right? And then when we're in every home, that's part of the package I give them. And at the end, I tell them all we're going to play a game. At the end of showing, I'm going to ask each of you separately. You know, you have no cheating. So everybody has to give their own number. On a scale from one to 10, one being the least, 10 being the most, what do you rate this home? Go. And then she'll tell me. And, I, and then I'll say, go. Okay. And then I'll do his. And I write down exactly what they say. Then move to the next house. You do the exact same thing. Now, this is where you got to make sure one's a winner, right? So then you pull away the other one and just take that away. Okay. Well, that one's out of the equation. Let's go to the next home. And so that's how you narrow it down. So by the time you're in the last home, there's only two choices, that one and whatever one that you were in between, right? And that's how you don't get, oh, if only I had the kitchen from the first house, the backyard from the second house. <laughs> okay, this is really critical. This is something we teach a lot in new homes because we have a lot of inventory. We have inventory homes, we have all sorts of models, all sorts of home sites, there's a lot of information. I will tell you about 95% of my deals were written on the first visit. And the reason is they walked through my door for a reason and it doesn't mean they started looking for homes that day, right? But I wanted to make sure that we answered all of their questions. So morning, we were able to then get to their final solution, right? So you couldn't show too much. I have agents who will say, oh, I'm, you know, I have to show here and I have to, why? Don't show too much. You're not doing your job. You're confusing them, which is not what they hired you for. Nobody hired you to confuse them and take them on a whirlwind tour, right? So that's not our job. Our job is to help them narrow it down so that we're using their time wisely and we're making clear decisions based on what they were looking for, right? So the other, like, for example, I was with a builder. I was, I was, I brought an agent and buyers to a builder and we sat outside. Of, I love doing this at builders, by the way always end up in the builder model because you could go sit down outside on their beautiful patio furniture or somewhere in the house. And I Ben Frankled it. 
And it was, you know, whether they wanted to be a building one or whether they wanted to have an inventory. And we wrote a contract that day and it's to be built because the to be built made more sense for them. I, of course, like the inventory better with a nice bonus on it, but it wasn't about me, right? It was about them. So, but I also will do it in the last house right there on the countertop. Now, if you don't have an opportunity because it's owner occupied and they have to come back, then I wouldn't hold it for a second. And I'd say, you know what? Let's go grab a cup of coffee. Let's go sit down, grab a cup of coffee, kind of just think about all the things we saw and do it there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to think about those things more about, well, we don't really go there to strategizing. The Ben Franklin closes to get them to decide which home. Okay. It's not for pricing. It's not for how you're going to put your offer in. It really is simply to decide which one is it. Um, now, could you use a Ben Franklin close with a seller? Why Any, not? Yeah. How would yeah. you use it? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I guess it depends on what the reason why I'm selling the home. They want, they want the, the benefits of selling their home, uh, waiting before they bought a new home, or selling the home now and then renting until they got the renting. Good, that's so, true. So, so the sell the now or yeah, right? Sell now, yeah. Multiple now. offers. You could do this for multiple offers. Terrific. Um, you could also do this about price decrease. Right? What's the benefit of decreasing your price? What's the positive, the, the pros and cons? A Ben Franklin close can be very good because then you could add carry costs in there, right? You could add um, intrinsic reasons why they wanted to get where they were going. The whole point of the Ben Franklin close is just to have a visual representation to show them, put their thoughts on paper so that they can clearly see what they already know to be the truth for them. That's why you have to use their words. If you use your words, it's just not effective. It's really not. That's why when you write on that sheet, scale from one to 10, by the way, I mean, you have to sometimes handle objections when you're in the house too. You know, I, for example, I had this one couple and this guy was just driving me nuts. Every house was a five. Really? <laughs> I'm in the third house, I'm like, I'm five down. Okay. Also, when I show homes, I strategically go to the, la the best one last. I do the ones I don't think will work first because I want to end up with them feeling like they saw a bunch of stuff and they're totally happy that we finally found the perfect one. Now, does it always work out that way? No, sometimes you're like, darn it, that one showed so much better in the middle. <laughs> I like that happens. And sometimes I've gone back to the house and done the bank break close there. You can do that too. But- um, But I'm asking three houses, right? No, I do five. five. I'm a fiver. Yeah, I like five houses. I like them to be tired. <laughs> because buyers a lot of times think if they're not, if they didn't see much, they're missing out. Right? After five houses, who's not tired in this room? Even I'm tired and I have a lot of energy. So if you're wearing me out, I know I wore them out, right? So, <laughs> so that's why I like five, that, that's kind of my number. But um, you know, sometimes we have to roll with it, right? Uh, the other thing is this guy with the fives, he kept doing the fives. So this is what I do, Rafe, five, wow. So what is it about this one that you really love? What gave it that awesome five? Like I, I just, <laughs> Yeah, I started to change his numbers because clearly his five was not my five, right? So we work with that. Or if she kept giving me tens, 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 and I'm like, Jesus, I'm never gonna get anywhere because every home's damn 10. They're never gonna agree. We're in trouble, right? So what would make it an 11, right? What would get that extra one? And then you work from there. But that's the only thing I will tell you when you do the scale of one to 10 thing. Is anybody in this room ever done scale of one to 10? I've been using it for years, probably back from my new home days. That's where I started it, God knows. But on a scale of one to 10, I've done it with investors. I've done it in so many multiple languages. It works with everybody. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, and I, could, I had a, a group of guys this one time. They were, all, they were all Spanish, actually. And they're all looking at me. I'm like, I don't care. If you want to see another home, you're going to play my game or we're done. <laughs> they're like, okay. <laughs> they're, they're giving you like 10 right off the bat. Why would you not then do it? Rafe, Rafe, Rafe. His question, so cute and novice, was if they're giving you a 10 right off the bat, why not just close on it right there? Have you heard of a little term called buyer's remorse? Mm -hmm. You're opening your door up to buyer's remorse. 
Plus, because they gave you 10 there, what the heck are they going to give you in the next one? Because you brought in someone you thought was the least, right? So maybe their 10 is really only an eight. And by the time we got to the last one, that would have really been a 10. So stay the course. Stay, now, if it's a tight inventory market, we got to put in an offer quickly. Yes, we're going to divert. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad we found the perfect home. Let's go ahead and make a move. But then I would have the buyer's remorse conversation. Is anybody doing the buyer's remorse conversation? Mm -hmm. Nobody knew home builders in here, except for Miss Tammy's doing it. <laughs> did I teach you that or did you learn that? Oh, I did. <laughs> I was like, it was a retail, but just, it just came out. The it is critical, especially for buyers. Sometimes for sellers too, but especially for buyers. Where you say, April, I am so excited about this home. I know you guys are going to love it, but I'm going to tell you something. I want you to be aware of something that's going to happen. It's called buyer's remorse. It happens to me when I buy expensive shoes. So here you're buying a home, right? You're going to be super excited. You guys are going to get home. You're going to be having dinner. You're going to be so excited about it. Then maybe a nightcap, still super excited about it. Then by the time you're having coffee in the morning, you're starting to go a little queasy. Oh my gosh, do we make the right decision? If you have not had that, I'm worried. Okay, because that is completely normal. So please call me when you get it so we can talk about it. Call it out. Everybody gets it. Who goes into buying a home or selling a home and doesn't have buyer's remorse? Sellers have it too. Rosanna, I know we're so excited we're gonna get this market on this home on the market. We're gonna sell it. But listen, I want you to be aware of something. Tomorrow, when you guys are talking, you might start to think, oh my gosh, do we make the wrong decision? So let me ask you a question. Why do you want to move? So you want to buy a new home and you know you can get the most money for your home. So I want you to write that down right now on a piece of paper, the reasons you're wanting to sell your home. So tomorrow when you start to feel a little queasy, I want you to look at that and know you made a very wise decision. Call it out, make them put it down. But if you don't call those things out, these are the ones that are gonna call you for a cancellation. These are the ones who are like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll wait, put my home template on the market, <laughs> right? We gotta get to why do they want to move and constantly hammer in on their motivation. Okay, assumptive close. I love the assumptive close. That's what I use after Ben Franklin. Looks like you've made the right decision. Seems pretty obvious, doesn't it, right? That's an assumptive close. Also, what's another assumptive close? We do it all the time. Anybody? You flip it around, say, go ahead and sign here. That's an assumptive close. Just assume the sale. There is nothing wrong. What don't we say, though? Do we always give them an opportunity to say yes or no? We never give them an opportunity to say yes or no because we have a 50% chance they can say no. So we don't never want to go there at a final close. It's okay in a trial close or, you know, if you're trying to check their, check their temperature, see where they're at. Those are the times you want to know how they feel. But when you're really ready to go and move on to contract, whether it be a purchase contract or a listing contract, you don't want a yes or no. You should have gotten that already, right? So that's when you use an alternative choice close, an assumptive close. The next step close. I love that one. The next step is, again, no yes or no. So it's either the next step, assumptive close, alternate choice close. I'm sure you guys are using these all the time. But this is a favorite of mine. This is a summary close. How many of you use it if you've not been to my listing presentation? Okay. This is part of my listing presentation training class. This is how I believe you should end every listing. This is how I close pretty much every sale in new homes. So I'm going to give you an example of what it looks like in new homes so you kind of get the idea. The concept of a summary close is big, smaller, 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 right? So in a new home sales arena, what do you do? You walk them in, you welcome them, and you take them to the mat. If you don't, you're fired because that's your opportunity for discovery. <laughs> but that is your opportunity to really find out what they want to be in the area, why they're coming to that area, right? What's important to them in that area. Then you take them and you show them the different floor plans on the wall, right? You're trying to find out how they're going to use the space, what's important to them in the space. Then you take them to the topo board and you talk about what's important to them in their backyard. Is it sunlight? Do they want a certain exposure? Do they want to be close to the park? What is it? How they, and then you go out and you actually find those things, right? So you go either to a model or you go to an inventory, whatever you're going to do. If you're going to sell a 2 be built or you're going to sell an inventory. Sometimes I'll take them to a model and then an inventory too so they can really visualize that. But where do you end up? On the lot. 
I've ruined many of really nice shoes on my lots. And I don't care. I walked him every time because you've got to put him in the picture. You know, I'll walk all the way across and be like, oh my gosh, do you think we have enough room for the pool? Like, oh yeah, have some fun with it, right? I always did. <laughs> and, and then when you're out there and you're talking about, imagine sitting here with that glass of wine, you better call me, watching the sunset, <laughs> seeing the Disney fireworks. The next step is, what do you want, right? That's how you do it. So a summary close is, oh my gosh, Emily, I am so excited you came in here today and you shared with me how important it was to be here next to these fabulous schools, only 10 minutes from work. I mean, this location is absolutely perfect for you, isn't it? And then you wanted a community that had that playground and it had that, you know, gated community that you felt like your kids could be riding their bikes around. And this community has that. So I'm so excited you came in. And then the home. You wanted that gourmet kitchen because I know what a chef you are and I can't wait to try some of those delicious meals you talked about. And then your husband is so amazing with all of his arts and crafts and he's going to have that huge workspace out in the garage. Incredible. And you're going to end every night as you shared in the jacuzzi staring at the beautiful fireworks. So that is a summary close. And then you go to alternate choice close. The next question is, do you want to close on this day or that day? Do you want, that's a summary close, right? So we do the same thing in a listing. Emily, I am so excited. We've decided on your marketing plan. We're gonna do Matterport. We're gonna do lots of virtual open houses, but we're not gonna actually have an open house where we let people in. We're gonna keep that private. We will do some broker open so we can get the top brokers through the area. And I'm so excited to say I will be doing the YouTube live videos every week for you. Please share them. I hate being on video, but I think it is the right plan. And I feel very comfortable with the price that we have come to. We're going to go ahead and start it at that 750 after a week. If we haven't had at least three showings and at least one offer or a talk of offer, we're going to go ahead and drop that price because we know how important that first 30 days is. And we're going to open it up to cash and VA, correct? So I feel very comfortable with that. Write it down. Now, I know you know we're going to be doing the Pulse Report, which you're going to get every week, showing you all the things we're doing. And then you're going to get the List Track Report from Sotheby's telling you how it's working, who's looking, where they're coming from. But you're also going to be hearing from me every week. Now, I believe the market speaks the loudest over the weekend, so I like to talk to my sellers on Monday. Do Mondays work for you? Mm -hmm. Terrific. Do you prefer morning, afternoon, or evening? Uh, morning. Please. Morning. And do you prefer email, text message, or phone call? Uh, phone call. Damn it. <laughs> phone call. <laughs> slide dial her, right? She's on my slide dial. Is that right? Slide <laughs> dial. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Terrific. Great. Now, the last question I have is when do you want your listing to go live? Some people feel Tuesday. Tuesday's the day. Put it on, build up some time before the weekend, get people excited. There's another school of thought, and it's Thursday. Hit them over the head right before the weekend. Boom, get the most shows possible. Which would you prefer? <laughs> Does it matter, guys? Yeah. There's no freaking magic day. I think that's all a bunch of malarkey. People ask me all the time, Carrie, what do you think? And I think, which works better in my schedule? <laughs> <laughs> That is a summary close. So I'm going to have every practice. You're going to break into groups and get them on Monday. And you're all going to practice it to the apartment. All right? Okay. 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 Okay.
Ready to come on up here? Do me down a little. Okay. I'll leave it up here, Randy. Okay. Um, All right. So, actually, what's that you can do to me? Sorry. No, no, you're this good. Yeah, you're good. How do you spell your name? Race. R A F E. R A F E. Yeah. Is it short for Nope. Just um, right. I'm English, but it's the name is in. And yeah. one of you is the seller, yeah. one of you is the agent. Write it down. Yeah, like that. Is your mom in Pasadena? Yes. My mom. Yeah. I was born David. Oh, yeah, you told me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Torquay. Torquay, where's that? That's on the southwest coast. So near like Cornwall and kind of that type of area. It's known as the English River, yeah. Yeah. but I was eight when I was in the States. So. Yeah. I did until like my mid teens, and then my voice cracked and kind of went away. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, they say if you're within a certain age, you're going to lose your accent. Yeah. Yeah. There's certain words that still comes out. I know. Same yeah. <laughs> well, doesn't everyone say Yabu? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah. But my, yeah, my mother's entire family is still there. Part of my dad's family is still there. But my sister ended up moving back when she was 21. Oh, why am I dying? No, they're Sorry. all scattered. Guys, we have already had our listing consultation. We're at the end, right? Mm -hmm. So, we've already closed on a commission. So in your marketing, say, and you know, we're doing all of that only for six percent. Only for six. And move on, or six and a half, or seven, or whatever it is. But write that down because it's another opportunity to re-solidify in case they're going to throw some at you, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Want to go first? I don't care either way. I, I don't know. If I'm not. Um, sorry, I'll go first. Okay, I, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, first is being an agent. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah so, go ahead. All right. Um, yeah, sorry, it should be more clear than I guess. I need to learn that. Again. Like, oh, you can go first. That's not I have, I'm going to be training us in September. Yeah, they said. I haven't done it yet. So, yeah, I'm going to look into it. Hi, yeah. guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah these, uh, I feel like that's a bit far out. I know. Prioritize yeah. that. You know? yep. So, I'll have to figure it out. But I definitely want to yeah but i wonder if they may do it if they do it in person at other places sooner mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i don't know how often they do that so. <laughs> hey, well, good. i really want to get into this like i really yeah. want to be like coaching got the planner oh, okay. nice have you, have you read the book yet no but i mean yeah. okay i don't think i read yeah it's on yeah yeah it's but it's like it's like you have to like wait yeah. for it yeah. Yeah. All right. So you be the the buyer, or the, the seller, seller, and I'll the, I'll be the agent, and then we'll stretch you. All right. So Emily, so with the marketing plan, do you want to do a virtual tour? You'd like to do virtual open houses and um, Facebook Live. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I don't have to be on the No, no, no. That will be me. I'll okay. be the one standing in front of the camera and doing those things. Just trying to make it more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll do some social media campaigns. So I'll your house and we'll see if it's including the So, and that'll be all for our six to seven. And then, as far as terms of price, where are you going to go? No. 
Wait, you'd be like, wait a second. No, I can't start for you. We'll do 550 and then um, the, just the 30 day close. A 30 day close. Like those are within 30 days. I guess you shot. Yeah, well, I mean, I was just saying, I was suggesting with a 30 day close. <laughs> No, you're good. I get bored when we get Yeah, like, like this one. stuff there. But it's good because that's how I, like, even last year, like, in our team, I'm not used to it. 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 Yeah, I'm not used to it. Yeah, I'm more of a get out there and do it kind of guy. I'm more of a get out there and do it kind of guy. Yeah. When it comes to communication, I usually think to my sellers every morning. Morning afternoon, we can pull it back here. You okay? Let's do it afternoon. And then we can prefer email, phone, go on, and we can prefer not to go through. Whatever. It's super easy. Or you just don't like me. <laughs> or I just really want to dance. No, yeah. not, not gonna and then should we go ahead and put some money? Uh, I don't think the uh, day is really nice, but I'm happy to go with Friday. <laughs> Or that everything looks good for you. Go ahead. I thought like when she threw it, I was like, oh, so I feel like they're signing a list. But then you go after this and have them actually sign a list. Yeah, well, I think you have them do this, and then you go and obviously do dot loop, you do everything else, and then you send it out to them. Okay, yeah, because I did it where you like actually sign the listing right there. And then yeah, I mean, I think whatever your preferred, whatever your preferred method is. Yeah. I prefer to not print so much paperwork. Just, yeah. I'd rather do the digital thing first. There's just some. Yeah. There's this guy. He didn't even have anything else. Like, yeah. That raises the same. That might be. That raises the same question. That might be. Yeah. Are they shared in email? Yeah. yeah. That also raises questions in my mind. Oh, All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so now I'm the one agent. Now you're the agent on the side. Yeah, that's what I did. We'll see back to us. I was like, I gotta like make it somehow aiming <laughs> for myself. Yeah. So, and I'm not that's how you do it. No, and <laughs> okay. I'm not used to it. So right. Yeah. Um yeah. we yeah. talked about yeah. marketing at home. And um, you want to talk in person. Yeah. What do you like? And uh, we also have some. No, no. The Pulse report tells you what we're doing. The list track shows you how it's working. Okay. Sorry, guys. So we are now all working. How's it going, guys? Good, good, good. And then you also really like the idea of customizing for sure that you're going to be able to your neighbors. Correct. Help them know what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we'll be doing that. We'll be doing that for the next six months. Great. All right, and then as far as the pricing, we just talked about 1.3 and 1.4. Yeah, I'm, I'd rather start at the 1.4, and if we need to adjust them, we'll go. Perfect. I didn't mention that right here. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. If we started at 1.4, if we started at 1.4, um, we're going to see how it's going after the first week. We don't have at least in the showing mm -hmm. talk of an offer or you guys to reconvene and drop in to the point three or four that yep okay all right and then um and then as far as signs um we are putting that sign up front but you mentioned you'd like to have it 
line on the waterway so yes. that as we go on our boats, <laughs> yeah, we'll add absolutely. that in as well. Okay, okay. perfect. Okay, communication. Um, you'll get false and list track. Those are two things that we've gone over that are tools that we use okay. to keep you in touch with what's going on with your list. But also, I like to mention that personally, I could do that on a Monday okay. or a Wednesday. Oh, let's do Wednesday. Wednesday? Okay. You have a time of day and the choice of. I prefer, I prefer mornings. And? Okay. Um, Okay. Phone call, email, text, whichever whichever works best for you. Okay. Good for me. I will be texting you okay. every Monday morning. Perfect. So, yep. Yeah. And then if you ever feel like you need to actually speak with me, feel free to call me back. Sounds good. Okay. And then which day would you like to go live? I'd like to go live on Thursday. I hear that's the best day to drum up business for the weekend. That sounds great. Okay. So we'll have that all ready to go by Thursday. Um, if you could just, if you think that sounds great, sign right there, please. And then we're going to take it down. All right, right. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to this. Let's get the house sold. Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> all right. You can be all right. How, how, <laughs> how do we all do? Okay, everybody do good? All right, we're just gonna move on because we're at 11 o'clock. We already know all some. All right, last thing we're gonna talk about, guys. Uh, Takeaway is the most, um, is the strongest clothes you have. I love a takeaway, but you must be very careful with the takeaway. You can never be at odds with somebody. As soon as you're on the other side, you've lost the battle. You know, so sometimes takeaways are too strong that people feel like insulted or that you don't care about them or something like that. So you have to be very careful how and when you choose to do a takeaway. But that is the reason in the beginning, when you're in discovery, at some point, when you feel somewhat comfortable, but before you get into the marketing plan, you want to tell them the three things that might happen here today. So Maria. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for calling. You're just such a sweetheart. So nice to get to know you. But I want to share with you that today, one of three things is going to happen. And they're all okay with me. Number one, you and I are going to discuss everything. We're going to feel super excited and get your home on the market and get you sold. Or secondly, you might not feel comfortable with some of the things that I'm offering or some of the ways that I like to market. And that might be okay too. Or I might not feel comfortable, maybe with the price and the terms of the time frame that you want to get there. And I will never over promise and under deliver. So in that case, I will thank you for the opportunity and bow out. Hi, Sharon. Okay, guys. <laughs> it is crucial you do that in the beginning. Because when you get to the end and they're hitting you so hard on commission, Right. Well, my neighbor will do it for 4% and my house is going to sell anyway. And you're just like, I'm over these people. That is time for a takeaway. You can say, you know, Maria, remember we had that conversation in the beginning where I said one of three things is going to happen. I think it's going to be the third because <laughs> unfortunately, I know that to get your home sold for the highest price in the least amount of time to the best buyers out there, I need to spend money to give your home the proper exposure. So certainly I cannot cut my commission that I use to go ahead and pay for that. That would be doing a disservice to you. So unfortunately, if all you're interested in is the line on the closing statement that says the commission, I'm not the right engine for you. Honey, I told you 6%. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> Guys, don't be afraid to do a takeaway, but commit to your takeaway, pack up. <laughs> Commit to your takeaway. Do not falter. As soon as you oh, yeah. falter on that takeaway, it's no longer a takeaway. They don't believe you. Be ready to walk out that door. Well, it's just like when you're going into a house, if you, you want to know that you can walk away if so you would want the same thing. Right. Oh, yeah. Like, no, I'm absolutely. I'm totally into that walk away. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you have to be careful. If you didn't bring up the three things that are going to happen, and then I just say, listen, this isn't going to work for me. 
Now she's thinking now like, I'm now I'm a jerk, right? And I don't want to work with her or whatever that case is. So you've got to be very careful when you do set that expectation up front, you're referring back to it. But that is a really strong takeaway. Isn't and that a good thing to do, even if you're going to end up with the summary? Uh -huh. Isn't that a good thing to do? Put that out in the very beginning. Anyway? Always. Yeah. No, in a listing presentation, always, always during discovery, you want to put out the three things that are going to happen today. Yeah, absolutely. I have to add it to my thing. Um, and this is the last thing I'm going to end you guys with. It's choose your words. Words are so powerful when you purposefully use them. So in the new home arena, we don't let people say lot, you know, monthly payment problems, restricted government. We don't say any of those words. Everything is a choice. It's a home site. It's your maintenance contribution. It's your monthly investment, right? And the reason you do that is because you want to always keep it soft and keep them comfortable because people hear negative words, what they assume to be negative, and they get you know tied up and tight. So, but the really great thing about choosing your words is you can use them against other people. Maria, I know you shared with me that your neighbor is willing to do it for 4%. And if she can work that cheaply because she's not going to put the money into the exposure, that might be your best option. I mean, if you really don't care about the bottom line, you're just worried about that commissionable price, go with the cheapest one. So your neighbor probably is best. Now, would I ever call myself cheap? No. Right? You have to understand that our fee for service is because of all the exposure that we're doing. And because we want the best agents to show your home. And so when she offers it at 2% to the top agents, they're probably not going to bring their customers. They're going to bring it to the neighbor down the road who's offering it at three. Oh. By the way, nobody knows that people do that, right? We know that. So call it out. Yeah. All right. Any questions about anything we covered? Did anybody have fun? I did. Yeah. Did anybody learn anything? Yeah. Woo! All yeah, right. I did, I recorded it. So thanks for joining in on this. I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye to everybody online. Does anybody online have a question? I will take that as a no. So, okay, I'll say goodbye to everybody online. There we go.